Sustainability is a more and more inflationary used term. So you all should know by now what sustainability, sustainable, sustainability actually means. So try to think of something you think is truly sustainable. And try to explain yourself why do you think this is something sustainable. So by a simple definition, sustainability means that there is an environmental, a social and the economic dimension which is durable. So it means that the future generations will not be affected negatively by what you do. And why do I talk about that? And why should you care? I would like to go back a few years when I asked myself how big the world is. And sometimes in your life you can only find out something if you actually go and see, experiencing it, uh, experiencing it and understand what it means. So I decided to go as far as possible from Switzerland without using any flights. I ended up hitchhiking from Switzerland to Papua New Guinea, which is close to Australia. And in these two years of travelings, I had amazing experience, experiences. So I could talk hours about the amazing people I met. Every day I met up to 20 strangers and they became friends. If humans would be bad, this cannot be possible. Or I could talk hours about the adventures I had. Maybe about all the cultures and what we can learn from them. But today I would like to talk about another subject. Today I would like to talk about something I've seen during three months of this trip. So during three months I've seen just constantly one thing. These are palm oil trees. We cut down the forest to plant them and I'm actually quite sure that everyone listening to this presentation has eaten a little piece of something containing palm oil from this area. The probability is quite high. Now imagine, try to imagine you move. You have smoke in your lungs. There, it's dusty, it's hot, and you move during three months just seeing this. So it's one thing if you zoom into Google Maps into the screen areas of the planet and you realize that our jungles are actually trees standing in lines. It's something else if you hear about it, but it is completely something different if you move constantly, every day, huge distances during three months and this never changes. This never changes. So. I was really impressed by these experiences. And after three months, it really starts to sink in. And you start to understand, this is us. We are far away, and we tend in Switzerland to, say, to think this doesn't affect us, or we are not responsible for it. And sometimes we cannot be responsible for everything, but this is us. We have to understand this. And I understood something else. I think this is a wonder of the world. Humans did something in the last 20 years which is actually impossible to achieve. We went to the most difficult and remote areas and we cut down this jungle. We moved huge volumes of trees. 
and we produce in these still difficult areas huge quantities of palm oil. We pump it into big super tankers to bring this palm oil to us and we eat it or we uh, use it for energy. And there's something else I realized. I think I'm, I'm, I'm really convinced that in the next 20 and 30 years, a lot will change. And only the societies which are able to solve the issue of resources and energy in the next years will be able to survive the next 30 to 50 years. Those which are not able to, to bring solutions for this uh, sustainability problems will fail. Considering that we are a global world and every failure or success will affect us all. And when I was traveling in this area, I, I was discussing with the locals and one discussion was really interesting where a guy said, well, we plant these green things and we generate sustainable income. So there was this word, sustainability. And maybe you can talk about it and say, well, in the economic part, there might be some kind of sustainable income, but it's very questionable if it's environmentally friendly or if there's a social sustainability. After this experience, I decided to study energy system engineering here at HSLU in Lucerne with a focus on sustainable energy systems. And during my um, studies, I had the opportunity to go to India and we built water infrastructures for schools and orphanages. And I think we really did a good job. We had a strong focus on respect, respecting the sustainability. And I think we had a positive effect. I think we did a good job here. But if I'm really honest, in the end I had to say, I'm not quite sure if this keeps on going if our financial help doesn't keep on going. So is it really, really sustainable? Another example is the solar decathlon in 2014. So we were a team, um, the first team from Switzerland who participated in this big competition. 20 finalists come together and they compete about technologies, concepts, architecture for a more sustainable uh, world. And I think a lot of these concepts came as close to sustainability as possible. And I think these concepts are really strong. But there was a little bit of doubt because I've seen quite a lot of technology which was not at all profitable or never will be. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions of this subject. If you make money with destroying the environment or the society, you're harming us all. But if you go for clean technologies, which never will be profitable, it's not sustainable. We can only change our times and our world if we have clean technologies which are profitable. And that's how they will spread out and actually change something in this world. Everything else will be limited on a small scale, on a national scale, on, 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 on a limited scale. So in the last years of my studies, I start to focus on actually initiating solar systems. And I accompanied a lot of projects. It was really in interesting. And there was again and again the same problem I've seen. Although certain projects would be highly profitable, even without subsidies, they did not get realized. And it was again and again the same problem. I would like to talk about the solution, uh, the problem solution of it. Today, if you have a multifamily house, you have all the energy, all the electricity from outside. The new situation is you produce maybe a part of it on your roof with uh, solar um, photovoltaics. So now a part comes from the roof and a part comes from outside. This is very important because only 
if you have the two lines covering each other, you can run this profitable. So if you have the blue line, this is the consumption. In the morning, you have the coffee machine. In the evening, you watch TV. And during the day, you have the production of the sun. And only the two uh, colors, if the two colors are on this, uh, over each other, it's actually self-consumption. And for this self-consumption, you get five times more money than if you sell it out into the grid. So this is really important. But why isn't it executed? There are certain legal issues, there are contracts, there's technical know-how you have, to, uh, have to, to make it happen. So you have to organize all this, you have to know at what moment comes how much electricity from the roof, and at what moment how much electricity comes from outside. If you can't solve it, you cannot organize it. That's a so-called self-consumption community, EVG, and that's how you can organize this. So during almost three years, we accompanied projects and we know how to solve it, and we helped these projects to solve it. But again and again, we've seen it's not big enough, it's not fast enough. So we try now to make it scalable, to make it simple, and to make as many such communities possible which make self-consumption directly, to make this clean technology profitable. So we are really excited to have this team. These are the guys we, which had the kickoff just a few months ago for a startup to make this possible and to make an easy solution. And we tried and focus on this subject. Sometimes you have to go out and see the global scale of something to understand what you do on a local scale. And that's what we really try to do, what we focus, what we put all our passion in, to cover this sustainability. Because don't forget, there are all the three parts. There's an economic, a social, and an environmental part to make it really sustainable. Thank you very much.